Hi, this is a description of the finale template for um, analysis, but also for chord scale uh, labeling. So the template includes a full analysis library as an expression library, uh, which you get to by clicking on the expression tool, double clicking, and you have Roman numerals there. You have individual scale uh, analysis buttons there or labels there. But I've also made um, groupings, so you can have a group, uh, you can label a chord scale all in one keystroke. Um, so here's some uh, quick orientation about this. So let's talk about analysis first, so that would be Roman numerals. All of these symbols can be set with shortcuts. Um, you, the most effective thing is for you to know how to set your own shortcuts so that you can adapt it to what your needs are at that moment. But uh, right at this moment, the diatonic seventh chords are set uh, with the shortcuts of numbers one through seven. So one major seven is one. You can see the shortcut is the little blue number up to the right. Two minor seven, the diatonic two chord in a major key, is going to be set to shortcut two and so on. What this means is that when you go to label the chord, there's two minor seven in the key of A flat. Um, all I have to do if I'm an expression tool is, uh, tool is hold down the note 2 and click and I get my analysis. The shortcut for arrow is A right now. The shortcut for bracket is B right now. You can change that. The way you set a shortcut um, is by uh, being in the expression tool and you select the thing that you want to have a shortcut for and then you do shift and then do the shortcut. So um, there's only a limited number because the, the computer keyboard has only so many keys. So the system that I've been using so far in this is to use all the numbers at the top of the, key, the computer keyboard, uh, numbers one through seven for diatonic seventh chords in, the key, in a major key. Then the next letter of, or the next row of letters below that, which is the QWERTY row, um, I do for secondary dominance. So five, seven, uh, two, for example, would be W because it's right below the number two. And then the next row is sub fives. And then the next row after that is common modal interchange chords. Okay, so this allows you to use keystrokes very quickly. For example, um, you know, this one is sub five of three here. So if I had set that shortcut, which I'm not sure I've finished doing that yet, but I, I, yes, I did. So I just clicked on D, which is two letters removed from the number three. The first letter below number three would be, would have been three minor seven. And the next letter below that, I mean, the, sorry, the first letter below would have been, the, the number three would have been three minor seven. The next letter below three would have been five seven of three. And now the next letter below that is going to be sub five of three. And finally, the last row of letters, which that would probably be, I'd probably assign that to flat three major seven or something like that, a common modal interchange chord that's associated with scale degree three. So that's a way to get your shortcuts um, going in a way that helps you do analysis pretty quickly. Um, so to give an example of that, I'm going to redo this analysis. So I need five, seven, and three. So I hit my key there. It gets me that. Then I need three minor seven. I hit the three key. I'm doing 5, 7 of 2, so I hit my W, which is right below the, the number 2. I need 2 minor 7, I hit the number 2, and I need 3 minor 7, I hit the number 3. And then I need some arrows, so I hit the letter A, letter A, and then I need some brackets, I hit the letter B, and the letter, and that's it. So you can see it goes pretty quickly. Okay, now the second part, that was a, that was a harmonic analysis. Now the next part is the chord scales. So in order to do chord scales, if you want to use open note heads, you have to set up finale to actually be in 8-1 time signature, which means it's eight whole notes in, the, in a single measure. And when it's a seven note scale, you use the eighth note as the root. And when it's a nine note scale, you use the eighth note as the seventh scale degree. How do you do that? Well, you go into the time signature tool, you double click, and overall the measure you want to do, and you just move these buttons until they show that you have the right number of whole notes. And you use the beat duration, you move that until it's a whole note, and then you move these up or down until there's eight whole notes there. 
and then you go to more options and you choose um, uh, use a different time signature for display and then you choose the time signature of the song you're in usually 4-4 four, four. you click on that say OK and then that measure or group of measures will be uh, kind of secretly in 8-1 time but it'll look like it's in 4-4 four, four. that will allow you to have all these whole notes and then when you've got your whole notes like say I'm going to do uh, the chord scale for this one Phrygian C Phrygian so what I would do is I just put in my 8-8 eight, eight, uh, eight, whole notes, put them all in there, and uh, a diatonic scale, so I don't have to do any accidentals, but if I, I did, now would be the time to do that. It's a seven note scale, so I have my doubled root here. Then I go to the expression tool, and I double click on that um, measure, and I go to chord scale groups, and I choose Phrygian, which I've done most of them. I haven't done them all, so uh, maybe by the time you get this template, there they will all be done. But anyway, um, I can show you how to do it too. So I assign that, and you can see everything is there. The name appears above, and then the numbers appear below. Now it's not lined up because the other measure isn't filled with whole, whole notes yet. So if we fill that up, then every all the spacing will work out. Let's see. It's designed to have chord scale spacing of two chord scales per line, which is the usual thing that happens. So you can see as we get it, the right spacing happening, then it all lines up pretty well. Now, the final stage is that you need to show avoid notes. So you need a solid note head for that. So the way we do that is with the, I've programmed in a shortcut for that. You go into the staff tool. It's a, what we call a staff style. So now I'm in the staff tool. If I control click on that, you can see there's a menu of staff styles, which basically changes the appearance of a note without altering its playback. Or it can even alter its playback, actually, too. But um, And this one that we're going to use for this is called um, Solid Note Head. And you can either choose it manually, like this. Oops, I chose all. I made them all solid, so let me start again. I would just click and drag over that one note, and then I would apply it by, by uh, control clicking and going down and choosing solid note head. Or, um, let's see, lost it now, there it is. Or, much easier is if you set a shortcut. So the way you set a shortcut is to shift and the shortcut you want, and I've chosen the letter A for avoid note. And then you go to there and you choose the thing you want to be A, and you can see A appears in parentheses right after it. So I've done that. So now all I have to do is select the note and hit A, and it immediately turns into a solid note head. So that's the essence of how to use this um, template, uh, these ideas. And um, the only thing remaining is for you to learn how to make your own modal or scale labels. And I'll just quickly spend like 30 seconds on that, and then we'll be done. So say I wanted to make Locrian, which I haven't yet done. I would just copy one of these scales, like probably would copy the the simplest one would be to copy Phrygian because it has the most notes in common. So there it is. I simply select it, I duplicate it, then I edit, and I change the name, of course, to Locrian. Then I change this to Locrian. And then I go down and just adjust my labels. Well, Locrian has S2, flat 3. It has T11, but it has flat 5, so I have to change that. Uh, it has S flat 6 and and, um, S and flat 7, so the rest is cool. I say OK, and now I have Locrian available, and if I wanted to apply it, I would just click and apply it there. Obviously, that's not a Locrian scale there, but you get the idea. So that's how you would make more scale labels. Um, and I, that's it. I think that's it for now. Okay. Let me know if you have questions.